let us begin with new study session equity market organization market indices and market efficiency first one is reading 46 market organization and structure under this los we are going to look at functions of financial system classification of assets and market what are the major kinds of securities, currencies, contracts, commodities and real estate. Then we'll understand various types of financial intermediaries. Then the position an investor can take. We'll also understand the concepts of leverage ratio, rate of return and margin call. We'll also understand the terms such as execution, validity, clearing instruction various kinds of orders such as market order, limit order etc. We look at two major kinds of markets primary and secondary then we look at the code driven market and the other one order driven market we will also look at brokered market and the characteristic of well functioning market and finally we will understand the objectives of market regulation. Now let us start with the functions there are three main functions of financial system. The first function is mainly enabling savings and borrowings. Then second is determination of rate of interest and third is capital allocation. Let us look at them one by one. So under first main function we have savings so the financial system helps an entity save money for the future by investing in various money generating instruments for example mutual funds, bonds etc. Second, it helps an entity to fulfill its current need from borrowing. So it could be paying taxes, buying certain asset such as buying a house etc. or for current consumption. Equity is another instrument through which the capital is moved. So the financial system helps in raising capital an entity may need like companies selling their ownership rights. The financial system also helps to manage risk. The entity can use financial contract to offset risk. For example if a firm buys a commodity in the form of raw material so it can hedge these contracts through available derivative instruments to offset the risk. The financial system also enables the exchanging of the assets across the countries. For example, if a company is selling its product abroad, then the revenues which are in the currency of a different country can be converted into the domestic currency using financial system. And if there is an information which is available with an investor based on his own understanding of the business then that can be taken advantage of in terms of earning extra return on the investment. This is also made possible through the financial system. Now let us look at the second important function which is rate of return. So financial system also determine a rate of return. So this price in the financial system is nothing but the rate of return. We have the demand curve and supply curve for interest rates as well. So low rate of interest means investor will borrow more and since the funds are available they will spend more and thus they will reduce their savings. So that basically indicates increasing the current consumption. High rates of in interest will have opposite effect which is increasing the savings and decreasing the spendings. So current consumption is reduced. Now the equilibrium interest rate is the interest rate where the demand and supplies are meeting. So this is the rate at which the individuals, businesses, government who are desirous to borrow is equal to the amount 
that individuals, businesses and government desire to lend. So this is the point at which borrowing and lending interests are meeting. Then based on the interest, the risk, liquidity and maturity, the equilibrium rate is different. As for the higher risk, the investors will demand a higher rate of return. If the investment is illiquid, again the rate of return demanded will be higher. And similarly, assuming the yield curve is upward sloping, for long term maturity, the interest rate demanded is going to be higher. So rate of return also depends on risk, liquidity and the maturity of the investment instrument. Now the third important function of financial system is capital allocation. So with limited availability of capital, it is the investor that has to distinguish between good firms and bad firms. And then they need to channelize the capital so as to earn return in an informed manner. So financial market is basically ensuring a proper capital allocation from the investor to a firm. And if the financial system is, uh, is efficient, then this rate of return will be according to the risk the investor is taking by investing in that particular firm. Let us move to the next topic which is classification of assets and market. So there are many ways to classify assets in market. Let us look at certain kinds of assets. For example, real asset. So they include the tangible assets like real estate, equipment, etc. They are illiquid in nature. Since the information regarding them is not completely transparent and they have high transaction cost as compared to stocks and bonds which are more transparent in nature. Then debt securities, these are the assets in the form of a contract that represent money owed to some party. So there is a lender and there is a borrower. So bondholder is basically a lender and the bond issuer is borrower. Then we have equity securities, these are another class of assets. The securities represent the ownership interest in an ent entity. So that represents ownership interest. Then we have derivative contracts which derive its value from the underlying asset. So based on the nature of the derivative, the price of the derivative moves in relationship to movement in the underlying asset. These derivatives could be on some commodity or a financial asset. So when they are based on financial asset, they are called financial derivatives. So financial asset will be equity index or equity or debt etc. Then we have physical derivatives contract which derives its value from underlying physical asset. For example oil, silver etc. We can also classify securities as publicly traded and privately traded securities. Publicly traded securities are the ones which are traded on the exchange and they are subject to certain regulatory procedures. So the price of these securities is available for everyone since they are large number of buyers and sellers trading in the market and determine a fair value of the security. Whereas the private securities are not traded on the exchange and that is why they are not subject to any regulation and they are generally less liquid than publicly traded securities. Then we have commodities which include agricultural products, precious metals, etc. Commodities complement the investment opportunities offered by equities, debt, etc. Then we have spot market. So this is the market where immediate delivery is done. If somebody wants to buy or sell, immediately there will be an exchange and the delivery of the product is made. We can also classify the markets in terms of primary and secondary market. So primary markets are the one where the newly issued securities are traded. For example, initial public offer. So raising through IPO is accessing primary market for equity. 
similarly when the issuer of a bond is selling the bond to a borrower sorry the issuer of the bond is selling the bond to bond holder that is primary market transaction but in the case of secondary market the securities are sold to general investors that is investors are selling or buying securities which could be equity which could be bond among themselves so the main borrower in the case of debt or the company in the case of equity is involved in primary market transaction but in the secondary market people are buying and selling among each other let us look at some other types of market money market so this is a market for debt securities which have the maturity of one year or less than one year so this is basically for short term funds then we have capital market which is generally for long term debt and equity securities where maturity is not defined then we have alternative market which is a market for collectibles gemstones lease equipment etc so these kind of markets are difficult to value and they are generally illiquid in nature so they are sold at a discount rate now let us move to the next slide major types of securities currencies contracts etc so let us look at fixed income instruments first these are fixed payment schedule as the interest rate or rate of return is fixed on these kind of securities there are specific payments which is to be made at predetermined intervals for example we have bills notes cds bonds or other fixed income instruments the equities do not have any kind of contractual payment system the payments are not certain so dividends may be paid may not be paid and at different infrequent intervals but they represent ownership in the company so whenever company makes profit and the decision to share the profit has been made the dividend will be shared with the equity holders then we have preferred stock which is somewhere in between the equity and the bond it has the properties of both equity and debt instruments the owners of preferred share have a priority over common stockholders in the time of liquidation so at the time of liquidation the first claim on the assets will be of bond holders the second claim will be of preferred stock and the last claim will be of common stockholders now let us look at the warrants these are somewhere similar to options which provide the firm with future common stock capital when the holder exercises the warrant so when the holder exercises the warrant he or she gets a common stock then we have pooled investment vehicle where instead of buying individual shares or bond an investment can be done through buying or selling a pool of assets which are owned by an investment company the pooled investments help investor because it gives the service of a manager who operates the investment so these managers have the expertise of determining what kind of securities are overvalued what type of securities are undervalued and what are the expectations from the market so accordingly they buy or sell or keep adjusting the investment pool the example for pooled investment vehicles are exchange traded funds mutual funds asset backed securities etc let us look at the next topic which is currencies so currency market is generally over the counter market because there is no proper exchange for currency and the participants in currency markets include central banks commercial banks etc let us look at various kinds of contracts we have first is forward contract which allow buyers and sellers to sell or buy at a predetermined date and predetermined price suppose a and b are two individuals suppose a is buying a contract from b that is a is promising to buy from b 
in future at a particular price and after a fixed time interval. So suppose it, if it is one month contract, then if A is buying the contract, that means A is promising to buy the product one month from now at a given price that is called forward price. Similarly, we have future contract which is same as forward contract. The only difference is they are standardized and they are trading generally in exchanges. And this contract is guaranteed by a clearing house. Then we have swap contract in which the parties agree to exchange cash flows over a period of time. Suppose a party A has asset X and party B has asset Y which is giving certain cash flows. Y is also giving certain cash flows and A and B are getting into a contract in which they are planning to swap their cash flows. So the first cash flow from X will go to B, first cash flow from Y will go to A. Similarly, second cash flow from X will go to B, second cash flow from Y will go to A. So this is how the cash flows are exchanging. So this could be for currencies, this could be for interest rate etc. So the interest rate swap is the one where floating rate interest payments are exchanged for a fixed rate. Like in this case, A might be having a fixed interest rate where B might be having floating interest rate. So interest payments are being exchanged. Similarly, there is a currency swap in which one currency is getting exchanged for another currency. We might have an equity swap in which the exchange of return on equity index or for portfolio for interest payment on debt securities involved. So in an equity swap, one party is paying the interest on debt security, another party is paying return on an equity index which are exchanged. Then we have options. Options are right to sell or right to buy an underlying instrument at a specific price and specific time period. So this could be of two types, call option or put option. Call option is right to buy and put option is right to sell. In call option, the buyer of the option has right to buy but he is not obliged to buy. There is no obligation. At the time of expiry or at the time of selling the option back, the gain or losses could be settled. Or if a delivery has to be made, then at the time of expiry, the call option holder has a right to buy. If the option holder does not want to buy, there is no